Okay, so in the uh, archetypes of literature, uh, North of Fry's uh, archetypes of literature, uh, let me share a screen uh, for the presentation also, and let us uh, watch some of the initial slides uh, as a part of introduction to uh, archetypes of literature. So North of Fry's theory of uh, uh, archetypes is what we uh, want to see here. Okay. Are you able to see the screen I am sharing? No, sir. No, okay, let me. Okay, now are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, North of Fry's theory of uh, arch archetypes there. Okay? So first basic meaning, uh, we, we got a brief idea uh, in, in simple terms, uh, not in an academic terms, but in simple terms, we are trying to see this. Now let us try to see academically, if you want to think about the archetypes, what does it, it, it mean? Uh, this. Okay? So in literary criticism, the term archetype denotes narrative designs, patterns of action, character types, themes and images which recur, recur in a wide variety of works of literature as well as in myths, dreams and even social rituals. So I, I repeat again, the term archetype in criticism denotes narrative designs, patterns of actions, character types, themes, images which recur in wide variety of works of literature, as well as in myths, even in our dreams and even social rituals that we uh, observe. Such recurrent items are often claimed to be the result of elemental and universal patterns in the human psyche, whose effective embodiment in a literary work evokes a profound response from the attentive reader because he or she shares the psychic archetype uh, archetypes expressed by the author. Now, this is uh, very interesting to see here that when an author is going back to the archetypes and picking up some of the recurrent patterns that happens in social rituals, dreams, myths, and tries to write a story eh, for today's audience, today's audience also gets connected with those stories or they understand the story, understand the meaning that is narrated by the author because they both, the author and the reader, they are connected uh, uh, with a common psyche, uh, common psyche. And in that common psyche, there are all those symbols, metaphors, images there. And so they both get connected with that world and so they can get the meaning also. For example, if you see narrative design, narrative design or patterns of actions, uh, we will find that uh, all traditional stories, they have a beginning, a middle and an end. Story has to begin and story has to end. That is the design of the story. So why do people tell a story where they all begin a story and they end a story? For a while, for a while, when you try to understand archetypes, uh, at that time, you have to forget that in absurd theater or in modernism and postmodernism, people do not have a beginning or an ending that you have to forget for a while, for a while, you have to, because those literatures, postmodern literatures, they are actually uh, uh, making an argument against traditional literature, uh, against the canon of literature. They are making that argument. So they are deliberately distorting the narrative designs. Uh, they are deliberately distorting the narrative designs and patterns of actions, character types, themes, image, everything. They are deliberately distorting. They are deconstructing uh, the basic idea. That's why uh, when we go back to the image of Sake dance or the moon rising in Waiting for Godot uh, or the leaves uh, in the second part of Waiting for Godot, these all images, uh, they are not going to uh, work out very well with the traditional literature or even the archetypes of those things also. Why? Because they are trying to make an argument against the canon of literature. That is why that is happening there. 
But when you are in archetypes of literature, at that time you have to see that world literature, they have a common narrative design. That is, story has to begin. Story has to end there. Modernism, postmodernisms are movements and they ended in 20th century. What, re what remains to, uh, what continues to exist even in 21st century is that even today we have stories which begin and which end. Even though we have, uh, we have, we, we have uh, uh, grown out of the phase of postmodernity, absurdity. And we are in 21st century, uh, the, in the third decade of 21st century. Today, you see what kind of literature are very popular. You will say films, web series. Do they have beginning and an ending? You will say yes, they have a narrative design. They have patterns of actions. They do believe in character types, themes, images, which are more traditional than what was postmodernist also. That's why postmodernism, absurdism, it is a movement. It, it, it was there for a while. But what remains with us even after that is what is discussed in archetypes, uh, archetypal literature. So uh, narrative design, the beginning, the middle and an end. Parade patterns of actions are <coughs> there is a hero which can be considered as character type. There should be a villain who is again a character type. And there is a conflict between a hero and a villain. What are the images of hero and villain? Hero is standing for good. Villain is standing for evil. And ultimately, the pattern of action is a conflict between good and evil, a fight between good and evil. So that pattern of action is an archetype. And you will find innumerable literature. Almost 90% of our literature will have one simple pattern. And that is a conflict between good and evil. Good will be represented by a hero whom we call it a hero and a uh, 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 villain will be somebody who is representing the evil uh, there. Again, if you'll come back to absurd theater or 20th century literature, modernism and postmodernism, you will find that there is no hero. There is anti-hero. Uh, so the hero is the villain and villain is a hero. There is all confused uh, uh, state of thing. That's why we have to keep this aloof. Uh, this all statements are, are trying to make uh, some kind of... Uh, 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 some kind of uh, observations uh, or we can say uh, arguments against the traditional way of looking. These are all experimentative modes of dealing with character types or patterns of actions also. So if you will mix up this with that, then you will not be able to understand archetypes uh, properly. So in your mind, you have to keep the compartments very clear that when I see that hero is not good, Hero is villainous or villain is good. Uh, villain has some idea that is better. Then there is some kind of confusion happening in today's narrative. Uh, it will not fit well into the idea of uh, archetypal criticism. Such recurrent items are often claimed to be the result of elemental and universal patterns in human psyche. And so because now when we think of this universal patterns in human psyche, uh, at that time, we have to see that from where is North of Fry or Maud Bodkin getting these ideas that there is a universal pattern in the human psyche. How, from where do you get this idea? Uh, basically, that if anybody is thinking in this way, that our human psyche, everybody, all humans, they have, they all are connected with a universal pattern. From where are they getting this idea? Then uh, we have to refer to these two works. One is by... James G. Fraser, uh, the work, uh, the title of the work is The Golden Bow. And another one is uh, uh, The Study of Death Psychology by Carl Jung. So uh, an important antecedent of the literary theory uh, of the archetype uh, are these two works. Uh, uh, it was the treatment of myth by a group of comparative anthropologists at Cambridge University, especially James G. Fraser. Uh, who is the golden bow, uh, identified elemental patterns of myth and ritual that claimed recur in the legends and ceremonials of uh, diverse and far-flung cultures and religions. So this work by the anthropologist at Cambridge University, uh, they told us, uh, their study, their study told us that uh, uh, cultures who are far-flung, Africa, China, India, England, America, they have never met. These people have never met. They were never together yet. Yet they all are doing some kind of uh, uh, rituals which are very common. 
their myths are very common huh? their myths are very common we have we are compared many of the greek myths with indian myths and we find lot many parallels in greek myths and indian myths if we study chinese myths we will find the same patterns there like we have like we have a god of wealth huh? we have god of wealth we call it lakshmi huh? lakshmi as a uh, god of a uh, goddess of wealth the same way even in china there is god of wealth and the god of wealth is riding a tiger huh? the god of wealth is riding a tiger we also have goddesses who are riding tiger yeah? mashero wali yeah? we call it so we find patterns uh, 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 very common patterns among the far flung uh, people and but this study was done by anthropologist at cambridge university and so uh, we came to know that uh, uh, there are recurrent legends ceremonials of diverse and far flung cultures and religions and they have a, a pattern a common pattern uh, in in that that is established by this study and this work of james g fraser is very important in that work second second important work was uh, uh, even more important antecedent was the depth psychology of carl jung who applied the term archetype to what he called primordial images the psychic residue of repeated patterns of experience in our very ancient ancestors which he maintained survive in the collective unconscious very important word collective unconscious of the human race and are expressed in myths religions dreams and private fantasies as well as in works of literature so though many people did not do not agree with the observations of carl jung but during that time it gave a very interesting foundation for archetypes of literature that human beings have have collective unconscious human beings have uh, have a collective unconscious and through this collective unconscious they all are connected with each other they are connected with uh, uh, each other uh, through this uh, uh, collective unconscious uh, but this very idea of collective unconscious is very interesting eh? to to understand or to 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 think about primordial images our experiences they survive with us now this means if if carl jung is right in his death psychology then eh, it means that there is rebirth also there might be some idea like rebirth now many people many religions do not believe in rebirth hinduism believe in rebirth but christianity islam do not believe in rebirth so they may have a problem with this idea that if we, if you have a collective mind the mind of human beings are common and we all are connected with that and all our experiences are stored in that memory then the idea of rebirth also can be significant so those people who do not believe in the idea of rebirth the cyclical nature of human life for them to understand carl jung also may be difficult but maybe in a different way we can see that what carl jung said is that uh, there is there is something like a stored memory a stored memory of all human beings the first of the human and today millions of years that we have lived on the earth all experiences are stored as a memory and we are connected with that but because this memory is at unconscious level at unconscious level it is very difficult very difficult for us to remember it what we can remember only the conscious part only the conscious part there is large part that is subconscious and even larger is unconscious you might have seen the image of iceberg 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 anybody can tell me what do you mean by iceberg Yes, sir. It is an um, uh, big ice, a uh, big mountain of ice in the uh, ocean, mm-hmm. and it is uh, mostly uh, one third, what three fourth part is dipped in the water, and one fourth part is above the water. Ha! Uh, yes, yeah. So uh, iceberg huh, is an image uh, uh, where we can we can see that a uh, uh, large number of part of the snow huh, is is submerged huh, in the. Uh, in the ocean, uh, and only one eighth, one eighth part only is is visible uh, to us. So, this iceberg idea. I am sharing a screen here uh, to see this. Uh, Freud's three levels of mind: the conscious mind, the pre-conscious mind, or we call it subconscious mind also, or the unconscious uh, mind. Uh, this uh, we we see this uh, uh, image. Uh, 
uh, and this is the image of uh, uh, the iceberg uh, also uh, the iceberg uh, is an idea symbol to express this this idea now this unconscious is very large uh, very deep the conscious mind is not able to reach to the unconscious mind uh, is not able to consciously reach to to that uh, uh, unconscious mind but but in dreams sometimes we we reach to our unconscious mind when we write literature uh, we may reach to our unconscious mind in our rituals unconscious mind is recorded in our rituals it is recorded in one or the another way in our myth in our old literature our unconscious mind is stored uh, or the memories of the of all those uh, human experiences are stored in our myths that's why mythology is very important uh, old literature is very important because it has a memory of those people who lived thousands of years back thousands of years back and we are an extension of all those uh, people that's why in myths it get reflected in dreams it get reflected or in poetic activity or in creative activity uh, at times uh, this unconscious gets uh, reflected uh, there so uh, 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 two important works uh, which gave which became an antecedent to archetypal theory one was uh, uh, the idea that uh, people human beings on earth though they are following different religions their languages are different they live a different lifestyle altogether they have a different civilization different culture still they have very common rituals many of the rituals are very common their myths are also very common their gods and goddesses are also very common their old stories are also very common and so we get a recurrent pattern in all those things that that became very important idea to understand and then second and now see when you understand this you realize that well mine is not the best then i realize that only mine is not the best or i realize that everybody thinks that my religion is the best religion my culture is the best religion is the best of all my civilization is the best that is what everybody believes and when we are at the top of the thing looking at everybody that well these people their religion for me it is a bad religion but for them it is the best religion this food for me it is the best food for the other it is the worst food for me their food is the bad food but for them it is the best food and then i realize that well this is this is what it is diverse people diverse thing but everybody requires food to eat badu judu che pa chata badane bhojan to joye che koi jadu jeva nathi ke tadka ma jaine ubha re ane dhup dhup em kare ne energy aavi jaye evu koi ne nathi darek manushya ne bhojan levu pade bhale koi vanaspati khai koi prani khai par bhojan khavu badaye pade that is food is a basic archetype pachi e bhojan vegetable hoy e bajri rotlo hoy ke chicken biryani hoy e vastu judi che these are different thing but food is at the at the thing bada manushya e koi ne koi rite kapda pehrva pade people clothes pachi aava pehre teva pehre koi vadhu pehre koi ocha pehre but kapda bada e pehrva pade manushya matra alag alag rite they keep on wearing koi kapda na pehre to pandra o pehre koi bahu adivasi praja thi ma jaye to e e pandra o pehrta hoy pan kai e pehrta hoy that is how we see uh, the thing so james fraser and the study of culture and then psychological support carl jung said it is possible that people might have uh, this collective unconscious and so readers and writers are connected and that is why even if i read a japanese literature i suddenly fe feel some kind of connect if i read a chinese literature i see a some kind of connect if i read western literature or african literature i see some kind of connect but even in for india there is no need to go to china or japan or africa or uh, or america but here only if you read assamese literature then also you will see a connect if you read tamil literature tamil is altogether different culture malayali is altogether a different culture assamese is altogether a different culture but you will see connect because maybe all people are connected somewhere the idea which is very difficult to believe or to prove scientifically vaigyanik rite एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट की बात मान सक जगह पर जाइने ऑब्जर्व करूँ कि जो अँ रिच्युअल आ करे अँ आ लोग आ धर्म मैने दीस ऑल पीपल डू न एंड इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू अंडरस्टेन्ड इन अवर टाइम आ माइंड सेट जो आप आर्किटाइप्स एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट आधार डेवलप करिए ये आपने एक समझ आपे और समझण थी आज आप आज समय में कोरोना समय में ऑल्सो वेन पीपल से देट 
uh, Indians Indians got lots of benefit to fight against Corona from Ayurved. Ghana loko ek achha Ayurved thi Ghana loko ne saar hoti ho. Lot many people say, but it is not only Indian. Chinese also did the same thing. Chinese also have their own Ayurved. Huh? That is called alternative medicine therapy. Huh? Alternative medicine therapy and Chinese used a lot. Tya apn ek kada jaise garam garam kada. Tya apn loko ek khub pita. If you go to Africa, Africans also do not believe in vaccine. या हजी लोग को वैक्सीन थी दूर भागे ये हम जी के ना हमारा माता जी बचाओ हमारा देव बचाओ इफ यू विल वॉच देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल डॉक्यूमेंट्री देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल वेब सीरीज डॉक्यूमेंट्री वेब सीरीज ऑन नेटफ्लिक्स इट इज ऑल अबाउट दिस पेन्डेमिक पेन्डेमिक ऊपर आखी एक सरस डॉक्यूमेंट्री है देर दे हेव यूज दिस आइडिया के ईबोला ईबोला वेर इट केम इन आफ्रिका तेरे हु डब्ल्यू एच ओ डॉक्टर्स ने त्या जता तो लोग मेडिसिन लेवा तैयार न थे लोग मारे आ लोग ने कि ते भागी जाओ अमर धर्म अमरा देव अमरा देवी अमने बचाव एमने मोकलेलो आ पाप है पापीओ ने नष्ट कर सुण्यशाली जीवता रह बट वी विल ईट वेजी दिस रूट्स कि अगर कंदमूल खासू अने दवा काटसू पर आ मॉडर्न मेडिसिन अगर नहीं लीए देट हेपन जस्ट टू इयर्स बेक वेन इबोला वोज इन आफ्रिका and even today even today in in many states of india people are not ready to take vaccines apre tya gamdao ma pan avu thai che gana video tamne jova marse ke tya e keta hoy ke nahi amara mata ji bachavse amare vaccination evu na levanu hoy e bathu mata ji na tarike to aa ek pattern che this is recurrent pattern it is not that it happens only in india it happens in china also it happens in america also america apre ke ke bo advance tya to avu na hoy ne tya pan evu che tya anti vaxxers che ये कह सके वेक्सिनेशन नहीं लेवाओ रसी न ले टीबी रसी न ले सामान्य फ्लू में मरी जाए बट दे डोट टीक एनी अमेरिका ऑल्सो इट इज एफ्री एवरीवेर नाउ दिस टेल्स एज एन आइडिया देट एवरीथिंग इज रिकरंट पेटर्न क्या कोईपण मानव वर्तन ए एक अलायदू अलग प्रकार होत ए प्रकार मानव वर्तनों अनेक जगह अपन ने जो मे ए रिकरंट पेटर्न है आखी ए पेटर्न ने जो शीखवाड़े it is archetypal criticism right? it gives us that everything has its own pattern in one or the another way to study so these two works played a very vital role in understanding uh, or giving us a basic idea uh, about uh, archetypal theory of archetypes or theory of thing north of fry try to see ke abanne anthropology ma barabar che psychology ma barabar che abanne vastu ne bhegi kari ane apre vishva sahitya jovano prayas kariye to kya prakar ni pattern apre samne aave which kind of patterns we can see recurrently happening in world literature from myth to today's literature what are those thing that was his quest and so in his, this essay he is trying to find uh, those uh, patterns uh, in world literature there so in our tomorrow's class in our next class we will try to study this that how uh, how this all uh, 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 study of this ideas uh, can give us very interesting patterns uh, in literature that we will uh, study in our tomorrow's uh, class the the presentation is uploaded on uh, the the blog which is linked in the material website so go through the presentation uh, go through the presentation so tomorrow very quickly we can touch upon all these topics and if you have any questions we can address your questions uh, also right now if you have any question you can ask uh, or uh, if any observations to be made that also you can make or we can end our class now is it okay any any observations uh, any uh, there are no no comments in chat so i am i am closing the recording i am ending the recording and we are ending our today's session also okay?